Eleventh Morning Be as a flower, content to be, to grow in sweetness day by day. If thou wouldst perfect thyself in knowledge, perfect thyself in love. If thou wouldst reach the highest, ceaselessly cultivate a loving and compassionate heart. To him who chooses goodness, sacrificing all, is given that which is more than and includes all. Eleventh Evening The great law never cheats any man of his just due. Human life, when rightly lived, is simple with a beautiful simplicity. He who comprehends the utter simplicity of life, who obeys its laws and does not step aside into the dark paths and complex mazes of selfish desire, stands where no harm can reach him. Then there is fullness of joy, abounding plenty, and rich in complete blessedness. Twelfth Morning Every man reaps the results of his own thoughts and deeds and suffers for his own wrong. He who begins right and continues right does not need to desire and search for felicitous results. They are already at hand. They follow as consequences. They are the certainties, the realities of life. Sweet is the rest and deep the bliss of him who has freed his heart from its lusts and hatreds and dark desires. Twelfth Evening You are the creator of your own shadows. You desire and then you grieve, renounce and then you shall rejoice. Of all the beautiful truths pertaining to the soul, none is more gladdening or fruitful of divine promise and confidence than this, that man is the master of thought, the molder of character, and the maker and shaper of character, environment, and destiny. Thirteenth Morning As darkness is a passing shadow, and light is substance that remains, so sorrow is fleeting, but joy abides forever. No true thing can pass away and become lost. No false thing can remain and be preserved. Sorrow is false, and it cannot live. Joy is true, and it cannot die. Joy may become hidden for a time, but it can always be recovered. Sorrow may remain for a period, but it can be transcended and dispersed. Do not think your sorrow will remain. It will pass away like a cloud. Do not believe that the torments of sin are ever your portion. They will vanish like a hideous nightmare. Awake, arise, be holy and joyful. Thirteenth Evening Tribulation lasts only so long as there remains some chaff of self which needs to be removed. The tribulum or threshing machine ceases to work when all the grain is separated from the chaff. And when the last impurities are blown away from the soul, tribulation has completed its work, and there is no more need for it. Then abiding joy is realized. The soul in supreme use of suffering is to purify, to burn out all that is useless and impure. Suffering ceases for him who is pure. There can be no object in burning gold after the dross had been removed. that the universe is right. When I am pure, I shall have solved the mystery of life. I shall be sure when I am free from hatred, lust and strife. I am in truth and truth abides in me. I shall be safe and sane and wholly free when I am pure. 
Fifteenth Morning If men only understood that their hatred and resentment slays their peace and sweet contentment, hurts themselves, helps not another, does not cheer one lonely brother, they would seek the better doing of good deeds which leaves no ruin if they only understood. If men only understood how love conquers, how prevailing is its might, grim hate assailing. How compassion endeth sorrow, maketh wise and doth not borrow. Pain of passion they would ever live in love, in hatred never, if they only understood. Fifteenth Evening The grace and duty that wear in Jesus can be of no value to you, cannot be understood by you, unless they are also in you and they can never be in you until you practice them. For, apart from doing, the qualities which constitute goodness do not, as far as you are concerned, exist. To adore Jesus for his good qualities is a long step towards truth, but to practice those qualities is truth itself. And he who truly adores the perfection of another will not rest content in his own imperfection but will fashion his soul after the likeness of that other. Therefore, thou who adorest Jesus for his divine qualities, practice those qualities thyself, and thou shalt be divine. Sixteenth Morning Let a man realize that life in its totality proceeds from the mind, and lo, the way of blessedness is opened up to him. For he will then discover that he possesses the power to rule his mind and to fashion it in accordance with his ideal. So will he elect to strongly and steadfastly walk those pathways of thought and action which are altogether excellent. To him life will become beautiful and sacred, and sooner or later he will put to flight all evil, confusion and suffering for it is impossible for a man to fall short of liberation, enlightenment and peace who guards with unwearying diligence the gateway of his heart. Sixteenth Evening By constantly overcoming self, a man gains a knowledge of the subtle intricacies of his mind, and it is this divine knowledge which enables him to become established in calmness. Without self-knowledge there can be no abiding peace of mind, and those who are carried away by tempestuous passions cannot approach the holy place where calmness reigns. The weak man is like one who, having mounted a fiery steed, allows it to run away with him and carry him whithersoever it wills. The strong man is like one who, having mounted the steed, governs it with a masterly hand and makes it go in whatever direction and at whatever speed he commands. Seventeenth Morning there is no strife, no selfishness in the kingdom. There is perfect harmony, equipoise and rest. Those who live in the kingdom of love have all their needs supplied by the law of love. As self is the root cause of all strife and suffering, so love is the root cause of all peace and bliss. Those who are at rest in the kingdom do not look for happiness in any outward possessions. They are freed from all anxiety and trouble and resting in love they are the embodiment of happiness. Seventeenth Evening Let it not be supposed that the children of the kingdom live in ease and indolence. These two sins are the first that have to be eradicated when the search for the kingdom is entered upon. They live in a peaceful activity. In fact, they only truly live for the life of self, with its train of worries, griefs and fears, is not real life. The children of the kingdom are known by their life. They manifest the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, self-control, under all circumstances and all vicissitudes. Eighteenth Morning the gospel of Jesus is a gospel of living and doing. If it were not this, it would not voice the eternal truth. Its temple is purified conduct, the entrance door to which is self-surrender. It invites men to shake off sin and promises, as a result, joy and blessedness and perfect peace. The kingdom of heaven is perfect trust, perfect knowledge, perfect peace. 
No sin can enter therein. No self-bound thought or deed can pass its golden gates. No impure desire can defile its radiant robes. All may enter it who will, but all must pay the price, the unconditional abandonment of self. Eighteenth Evening I say this, and know it to be truth, that circumstances can only affect you in so far as you allow them to do so. You are swayed by circumstances because you have not a right understanding of the nature, use and power of thought. You believe, and upon this little word belief hang all our joys and sorrows, that outward things have the power to make or mar your life. By so doing, you submit to those outward things, confess that you are their slave, and they your unconditional master. By so doing, you invest them with a power which they do not of themselves possess, and you succumb in reality not to the circumstances, but to the gloom or gladness, the fear or hope, the strength or weakness which your thought sphere has thrown around them. Nineteenth Morning if you are one of those who are praying for and looking forward to a happier world beyond the grave, here is a message of gladness for you. You may enter into and realize that happy world now. It fills the whole universe and it is within you, waiting for you to find, acknowledge and possess. Said one who understood the inner laws of being, When men shall say, Lo here or lo there, go not after them. The kingdom of God is within you. 19th Evening Heaven and Hell are inward states. Sink into self and all its gratifications, and you sink into Hell. Rise above self into that state of consciousness which is the utter denial and forgetfulness of self, and you enter Heaven. So long as you persist in selfishly seeking for your own personal happiness, so long will happiness elude you, and you will be sowing the seeds of wretchedness. In so far as you succeed in losing yourself in the service of others, in that measure will happiness come to you, and you will reap a harvest of bliss. Twentieth Morning Sympathy given can never be wasted. One aspect of sympathy is that of pity. Pity for the distressed or pain-stricken, with a desire to alleviate or help them in their sufferings. The world needs more of this divine quality. For pity makes the world soft to the weak and noble for the strong. Another form of sympathy is that of rejoicing with others who are more successful than ourselves, as though their success were our own. Twentieth Evening Sweet are companionships, pleasures and material comforts, but they change and fade away. Sweeter still are purity, wisdom and the knowledge of truth and these never change nor fade away. He who has attained to the possession of spiritual things can never be deprived of his source of happiness. He will never have to part company with it, and wherever he goes in the whole universe, he will carry his possessions with him. His spiritual end will be the fullness of joy.